Very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We got a few messages from different areas of the country that there are certain uh, weather disturbances. So we'll wait for another two, three minutes. Uh, by 7.35, sharp 7.35, we will start the session. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We warmly welcome all of you to the platform of CPD program, which we organized by the, with the sponsorship of uh, Magnus Academy. And this is today is the second day of the session. And today we have one of uh, a senior chartered engineer as our guest speaker. Before moving into the session, we would like to highlight and remind you a few ground rules where we generally are not allowing you to chat through the chat box until we finish the core session, which could be most probably one and a half hours time. And after that, we open it for the Q&A session. At the same time, randomly we put the attendance sheet as a Google form where you all have to mark your attendance. And please make a note on that. In the Zoom platform, we have a limited participants of 2000 only. Therefore, those who cannot join through the Zoom platform or those who are struggling to join with, we have opened our live streaming through the YouTube channel as well. So those who have subscribed to the YouTube channel, you can you have the access to the YouTube chat as well. Therefore, once you are either in Zoom platform or 
in the YouTube live streaming, you have to mark your attendance through a Google form, which you shared randomly. And at the Q&A session, most probably after nine o'clock, we start open the platform to everybody who can raise your question, or else you can type your question and send it to a WhatsApp group or WhatsApp numbers, which you have as organizers and the co coordinators, which is myself even. And those questions could be raised to the presenter. At the same time, if you have any further clarifications to be done, because we have very limited time, maximum 30 minutes of Q&A session, you can send those questions and we can compile, compile them together and we can send it back to the presenter and he will come back with his answers later. Silvanara Matakarana Kamati, Api attendance marker and Google form make a karaha, a Google form make up his Zoom make a Kavila Kopenano, Vinati Pahaloko, a window a Kathode, Manatang, a Tekam parallelly, because some Mantra of the YouTube live streaming naked, a link a Kamadano, YouTube will subscribe Kuruka Tere chat ticket, Logan Pulwa, Eka Itama Vadiga attendance mark Kirima, Hadisio attendance marker and Berunot, Power Kataka Kari signal drop back Kari Unot. I recommend that YouTube be able to take screenshots with the screenshot. I will take a 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 screenshot. In your YouTube live streaming with different time slots, like say 30 minutes interval. So you can prove your attendance if and when required and demanded by the organizers when they are up to issuing the certificate. With that remark, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here today for the second day. I would like to introduce our speaker today and the presenter today without wasting much of a time because he has a huge content today and I have seen his presentation. And I know for a fact that he's one of a conversant person in the field of electrical engineering. And this gentleman is an electrical engineer, BSc graduated from University of Morotua, a chartered electrical engineer. And what I like the most, he has many experience in Master of Business Administration and his green buildings as well. But what I know for a fact that he's one of a wealth of knowledge, which experience not only in design, at the same time, he has a lot of experience in project execution as well. Ladies and gentlemen, engineer, the chartered engineer Patum Jayawardhan is our presenter today. Please welcome on screen, engineer Patum, it's over to you. Thank you, uh, engineer Ali. Uh, thank you very much for your introduction. So uh, I want to share my screen. My screen is shared already, Nali. Can you see uh, my screen? Not, not yet. No, okay. it's not, it's not right. yet. I hope it's okay now, right? Now it is yes, getting better. Yeah, yes. and also I hope I'm uh, audible uh, for everybody. So good evening, Very everybody. Good. Yes. Right, so today we are going to discuss about uh, low voltage uh, distribution network design, right? So actually this is uh, as, uh, Engineer Ali mentioned, very wide area, right? So there are so many things that we should uh, discuss under this topic, but uh, we have very limited time. Therefore, I have selected uh, very important items that I must discuss with you, right? Uh, so for you to, uh, you know, do a design in this area. So today my uh, session outline, first, uh, during first couple of slides, I'm going to discuss with you uh, how we can start a design, how we are going to initiate a design, what we prepare during the initial uh, stage of the design, right? Then after that, let's discuss what are the important areas that you should uh, concentrate on designing LV distribution network. Then let's move on to final distribution circuits, right? Lighting, socket outlets, how we are going to design, what are the important factors, parameters to be considered as designers. Then. After that, there are some other special applications in the distribution network that we must uh, accommodate to have a better system, reliable system, a trouble-free system. So those things also I will try to discuss with you very briefly. Then uh, at the uh, 
last step of this session. So I'm going to discuss with you commissioning of the system, what we design, right? And uh, here also I'm going to discuss with you most of the important items, uh, most of the important tests that we should do uh, in order to ensure that our design is in order, right? So uh, let's move on. So actually design, we start from the document called design brief, right? Design is a, a very structured process. It's not just one step process, right? It has so many steps. Actually in every uh, project, there is a client, right? So uh, engineer Nalin, uh, if you don't mind, if I uh, turn off my video, so no, then I can no. use my pen, uh, you know, to explain certain things, right? No problem. So, right. Okay. So then actually this design is a very structured uh, process which has uh, so many steps, right? Every design, there is a client, right? Client is the main person who uh, invest money into the design, right? So we have client. So then after client, we have set of consultants, not only one consultants, we have group of consultants to help client to achieve his objective, right? So every client, so client may be a company, maybe a, an individual, uh, it could be a, you know, organization, public, private, whoever has an objective. Objective is to, uh, you know, fulfill his requirement. So that's why he invests money. So for him to support in design, we have a group of right, consultants. So group of consultants consists with architect, right? Then uh, structural engineer, right? Then uh, we are there as electrical designers, right? So not only electrical designers, there are other disciplines uh, of designers like AC designers, then plumbing designers, right? So they are responsible for their scope of work. Right. So from the beginning of the uh, project, that means at the initial stage of the project, till end of the project until we test the system, what we design implemented and hand over it to client, there must be proper coordination between all these parties. Right? If, the, if something happened to the coordination right from the beginning to the end of the project, then project definitely will be suffered. Right, so client will have a lot of adverse effect. There will be a lot of rework, right? Uh, making breaking throughout the project if this uh, coordination does not happen in an effective way, right? So first set of uh, first document that we prepare in every design, we call it design brief, right? or in other words, we call it uh, basis of design, or we can call it concept, design concept, right? Whatever the name, so it's just a document we prepared at the initial stage of the design, right? Through the design brief, designer gather information. So right at the beginning of the project, we don't have much of information uh, that we need for the design. So objective is uh, this design brief preparation to gather information from client and from other designers, right? So design brief is, uh, uh, it describes the scope of work and also objective of the client, right? So it's not just a single party uh, document, it's a joint effort of all the designers uh, in the project to prepare the design brief. Right. Objective of this design brief is to collect details what the designer wants. As electrical designer, what we want throughout the project, we collect from the through the design brief. Right. So actually, design brief explain what type of project is this. Right. It could be a hospital. It could be a uh, office building. It could be a factory, hotel. So whatever it is, describes in the design brief. And also it briefly describes the uh, electrical characteristics, right? At this stage, we don't have so much of detail, but uh, we can give a little bit of uh, 
understanding about electrical load characteristic and also we can estimate we can uh, calculate maximum demand very roughly at this stage by using uh, rule of thumbs and certain parameters right per square meter values just to get an idea so then uh, if we don't know anything we have to uh, use our uh, experience previous similar projects but we can't just copy anything into this but we can use our previous experience also into uh, for preparation of design brief and also to minimize the risk uh, and also we can uh, assume certain things right if we don't know certain things exactly so what we assume we have to justify it again uh, throughout the design process and we should make sure that there is no any ambiguity between this uh, any party what we uh, assume right so this is the uh, flow chart of uh, design brief preparation we start from the uh, we start preparation of design brief right then we really clarify outstanding information we collect certain information what we need and also if we need any clarification we get clarification from client and other parties and we assume certain things and what we assume we test right test our assumptions and we record it for future reference so if there is anything that we need to revise based on client and other consultants uh, information we go back revise it and come back and once everything agreed once everything happy with what we plan at the very initial stage throughout the design brief through our design brief we can complete the design brief preparation and we can freeze the design brief so once we freeze the design brief everybody in the project all stakeholders including client and other consultants they have an idea about what we are going to do as electrical designers in this project right so uh, this design brief uh, they should contain the occupancy details of the building right that is the first thing so if you are doing if you are designing an office building definitely we should mention how many workstations are there because main uh, driving factor in an office building is number of workstation right electrical consumption uh, number of panels outlets lights everything will depend on the number of workstation because in an, in an office so the volume of the office will be decided by number of workstation right if it is an hospital number of beds definitely right we call the 100 bed hospital 200 bed hospital 500 bed hospital the hospital capacity defined by its number of beds right if it is a factory machines right if it is a hotel definitely the number of rooms right how many number of rooms hotels so these details we have to mention to identify the magnitude of the project right then uh, details of plant and machinery is actually we need certain other details from other consultants for our design right so every project there will be a kitchen so then kitchen load we have to get from the kitchen consultants mechanical consultants right the computers printers these details we have to get from the client right then air conditioning details for us to further uh, proceed with our design we need to get from ac consultants right then capacity of elevators water pumps etc we need to get from prospective uh, consultants right for us to move forward so uh, then once we collect all these details we can have a you know better uh, design brief for others to review then in the design brief we need to do a uh, study or uh, analysis about environmental performance criteria right so definitely there will be a generator then noise level right if generator is installing uh, in a residential area if your project is in a residential area then there are certain limitations for the sound level right so that has to be taken into consideration at this stage once we start the execution we can't do anything for these type of things, 
right? Then also a method of emission, how we are going to emit the exhaust gas, how tall the exhaust pipe should be, those things has to be uh, taken into consideration and we have to give a consideration at this initial stage, right? Then uh, distance from overhead lines, etc., have to be considered at this stage, right? Then uh, there are certain other electrical services information we need to share with other parties, right? Especially the light fitting. Light fitting has two objectives. One is to get the illumination level, what we need for the certain areas, right? And the other thing is we need to uh, match with the aesthetics. So aesthetic part will be definitely uh, taken into consideration by the architect. So therefore we have to uh, disclose, we have to mention what we are going to use, what type of light fittings, right? What is the color temperature? Then uh, what is the size of the light fitting? How we are going to fix the light fitting? Research type, ceiling mounted type, whatever. We have to mention it at this stage. Then uh, if architect has any objection, any comments, concerns about this, he will raise at this moment. So then we can uh, fine tune and finalize the most suitable, best method, right? Then uh, location of a power distribution panel, right? Where we are going to keep our main distribution board, right? Where is the main electrical room? What, what we propose, right? Where is the sub-distribution load flow-wise? Where are the final distribution board? Those things we have to mention with the rough dimension of the rooms and sizes. Then other people, structural engineer, architect, he can do a better design by considering these things, right? Then standby power, whether we need 100% uh, backup for our project, or uh, is it sufficient to have backup only for the essential loads, right? Client will tell us, right? So those details we need to find out now. Then based on that, we can uh, calculate the generator size, right? Then power supply for the services, computer rooms, conference room, right? Clean room, if we have those things, we need to discuss or we need to uh, take into our design consideration at this stage by discussing with other consultants who are responsible for these systems, right? Then there won't be any issues once we start the detailed design and uh, drawings. And when we uh, when we are going to implement the uh, design, what we implement the uh, systems, what we design, then it won't be a surprise to anybody because this is already agreed by every party, right? So then uh, let's look at uh, design development process, right? We start with design brief, then we go to planning stage. Then if there is any uh, change in the planning, so we go back and review the planning. If there is no any issue, right? We can go to the next step. That is uh, start the detailed design. So if everybody agree with our initial design proposal, which we are, uh, which is given by the design brief, right, electrical design brief, then if there are no issues, then we can go to the uh, detailed design stage, right? When we go to the detailed design stage after prepare design brief and approve the design brief by everybody, there won't be any issues during the uh, detailed design stage, right? So uh, design development process, right? Once we prepare the design brief and approved by everybody, right? We prepare drawings, right? After the detailed design. So then we go to the installation phase, right? During the design and installation phase, in between, also there can be changes, right? Due to certain issues. Sometimes client might change his uh, objectives, ideas, right? Due to that, there can be some. Uh, changes, right? If such a thing happens, then again, designer has to do some design revisions, right? So if everything is okay, there is no any deviation between the design and what we install, then we can go to the testing and commissioning stage and we can do the testing and we can complete the project, right? That is the whole process from starting stage to the testing and commissioning stage, right? We 
usually pass these steps and we do revisions right review during this process if we do not match with what we plan at the initial stage right then detailed design right so once everything is okay design brief is approved by all stakeholders we start the detailed design so this is the detailed design uh, steps right so you need to remember these things so during the detailed design first of all we need to have a plan for the voltage drop levels right just remember for the moment i am going to explain you further right during the session right when we discuss the step of designs right we have to have a plan for the voltage drop why we have to have a plan i will explain it, right then after that remember we need to estimate the maximum load right we need to have estimation for the maximum load then only we can decide what is the transformer capacity what is your generator capacity right these capacities we decide right based on the demand of the building right so if there is a change in the uh, maximum demand during the detailed design phase compared to the design brief what we estimate so then we just check why it has happened like that right? otherwise we can uh, move forward for our other design steps right so then remember after we do uh, maximum load calculation we do calculation for fault level right what is fault level i will explain you later so then after we do fault level calculation we need to do a calculation for the cable right we need to do a cable selection right for cable selection we need to know what is the load of each and every distribution level right then fault impedance voltage drops right these things and protective device these things we need to calculate one by one right i will explain later then uh, we have to calculate fault loop impedance right why we need to calculate fault loop impedance i will explain right if fault loop impedance has issues right with what we plan so then we go back and we uh, review our design and do the changes according to the requirement right so then after we calculate uh, earth loop impedance we move forward our design and we do the switchboard design right we do the switchboard design panel board design right so during the panel board design phase we determine uh, short circuit prospective short circuit level right i will explain what it is for the moment just remember these terms right words then after prospective short circuit level we need to do protection device discrimination right we have to do protection discrimination this everything we have to do irrespective of the size of the project right it could be a five story six story building it could be you know 30 40 story uh, building it could be a factory which has you know uh, 100 uh, 200000 square meters square feet so whatever the building size we have to do this basic calculation in order to have a proper design right then after that we have to do an assessment about the earthing system right then after that we have all the details to prepare single line diagrams and other drawings schematic drawings and you know layout drawing so once we prepare these things, we can end our design process. We started from the voltage drop planning, then we estimated the maximum demand, right? Then we calculate short circuit levels, then we calculated uh, switch gear component panel boards, then we uh, calculated uh, the uh, short circuit level of each distribution board levels. Then after that, we did uh, protection coordination analysis right then after that we do 
uh, earth in design so then after that we have everything for us to prepare drawings and uh, other calculation documents so once we prepare that we can finish our design detailed design process right during this process we do recording and other things uh, in terms of documents and other things right for us to refer in the future in our design right so these design documents will be useful throughout the project time to time for the justification and other things right so then uh, this is that is the uh, procedure of design right so then let's look at what are the inputs we need for the design process right so design process of course we need clients requirements clients requirement already we discussed we get it through design brief right then after that there's another important thing that for us to design we need to follow specific standard regulations right from the authorities now if we are doing a project in sri lanka definitely we have to get power connection from either sri lanka electricity board ceb or leco right then our power receiving arrangement has to be in accordance with their standard right there are certain standards that we need to follow definitely if it is a big project big building there will be a fire system right fire pumps will be there are fire alarm system so then our electrical design also has to be coordinated with this fire department requirement then definitely we will have generators and other things which uh, interfere with the environmental authority so we need to get we need to follow their uh, standards right at this stage itself otherwise uh, there will be issues once the project is started right if we do not properly follow these steps and standards uh, specified by these authorities right then after that we need so many technical parameters for us to do the design right current capacity of the cable breaker sizes right breaker characteristic curve lot of things are there to prefer right so we can't have our own you know values and own judgment for these things so therefore to have a proper design which is acceptable by locally and internationally by anybody any organization we have to follow proper design standards right if you do not follow proper design standard and if we just get values from you know catalogs from here and there and according to our memory in our previous project so it will not be accepted right it will be a big issue when we present this to another party and when we try to get the approval for our design therefore always remember to follow design standards and regulations right but as a designer for your own uh, you know uh, justification and own assessment if you have done similar project in similar nature you can cross check certain values uh, with your previous project as well. it is not uh, you know unacceptable so it is acceptable you can you can simply copy something which you have done in your previous project into this project but you can do an analysis by using the data what is the if it is a hotel you are doing a design for for the second time then you can compare what is the power demand per room right so what is the power demand per square meter those things you can calculate and see whether you are in line with your previous design right if there is an you know mismatch you don't need to worry because due to client specification and other requirements so there can be changes right but you can prefer and uh, just have a certain a uh, bit of an analysis where where are you right then uh, you need architectural and structural drawings for your design process right so uh, i mentioned that you have to follow uh, standards for your design to get values and guidelines right so standard means a published document right uh, that establish specific 
specification and procedures for the designer to ensure the reliability of the design, right? So, and also uh, standard is a universally understood and adapted document, right? It's a published document. So then if you follow uh, the design standard and if you refer uh, design standard to get values for your design, nobody can challenge you because you have already uh, followed a published accept, internationally accepted document for your design. Right? So there won't be any argument on the values if you follow a design standard. Right? So these are the design standards mostly we use in our design. Right? So we might do designs for local projects. Sometimes yeah, you will do design for international project, right? So therefore, depending on the project and the country standard, you have to follow standards, right? Certain standards are there. So mostly in local projects in, in, in our country, Sri Lanka, we use uh, IET wiring regulation, right? And also actually IET wiring regulation is an extracted version of BS7671, right? Therefore, it doesn't cover everything, but it covers most of the thing because uh, IET uh, revise, you know, uh, periodically uh, when new things come into the industry, right? Therefore, it is a very updated document, but it is an extracted version of 7671. But BS, uh, other standards, if you can't find anything uh, for your design in IET, you can follow other British standard uh, documents, right? Which uh, explain the parameters and requirement for your particular design, right? So then you have IEC regulation, right? International Electro uh, Technical Commission standard, right? We have to follow sometimes for certain projects, right? Then we have American standard uh, National Electric Code, and we have NEMA, right? National Electrical Manufacturers Association standard, right? If you can't find anything in about standards, so we can find these details in these standards and we can follow these things. Then IEEE standards. Sometimes for certain designs, we have to follow IEEE standards that way. And if you are doing a design which is related to fire applications, so you can follow NFE, right? So, but somehow I always encourage you to follow a standard instead of just uh, getting values right here and there so it definitely will be challenge uh, during the design process right so if we talk about a uh, bit about uh, iet regulation right iet regulation so they uh, renew this regulation periodically when there are new things come right so when they publish a new regulation they change the color also right so we started in my early stage i started with 17th edition 16th editions also now we have 18th edition this is the latest edition that we should prefer we should follow right uh, 18th edition also now we have yeah amendment 2 right which was released in uh, 2022 right so color is brown color. so this is the book that you should follow in IET for your design, right? So this is very updated document. They are most of the thing which we are not covered in 17th edition, like, you know, electric vehicle, solar installation, right? Uh, harmonics, electromagnetic interferences. Those things are here in this uh, document, right? IET uh, 18th edition amendment two. So if you are doing uh, designs in, uh, uh, you know, daily basis. So try to uh, find this book. This is very useful. Actually, there are a lot of uh, technical data in appendices of this um, uh, regulation, right? Which you need uh, definitely for your uh, designs, right? So then uh, if we summarize the design process, right? We start with the design brief, right? So once we start the design brief and uh, freeze the design brief, we can go to the detailed design stage, right? In detailed design stage, you definitely need to follow standard, right? Relevant applicable standard. You have to mention this standard what you are going to follow 
in design brief also then there won't be any ambiguities between the parties what the, the standards you are going to follow because especially if you are doing a project overseas projects from here in sri lanka you have to mention that right because in certain countries like bangladesh pakistan right fire applications so they follow iec standards whereas we follow here in bsc standards so we need to clear it out right at the beginning of the project right then we need to look at the uh, statutory requirement uh, defined by the uh, government organization right if you are doing a project in other country definitely for power receiving system you have to refer to their that country's uh, design standard if you are doing a project in Maldives, telco then uh, bangladesh right there they have regional electrical company right same like uh, cb in sri lanka so likewise country-wise they have their own organization so you have to refer their standards right then details of other services right details given by the other engineers other consultants in the project we have to definitely take into consideration so once you take into consideration all these facts then you can do a proper uh, detailed design so after your detailed design you produce calculation sheets right so these are our outputs these are our uh, output of the effort right then definitely you prepare design drawings right design drawing these are our bibles right so then we you have to prepare a BOP, bill of quantity right uh, for client to get quotations and issue tenders right then you have to prepare a technical specification what type of materials what type of uh, you know uh, technical requirements you want for this project as a designer you have to specify right so during the design phase you will pass these steps and you will generate prepare these documents right so that is the output of the design and that is the uh, you know effort of you right as a designer so under output definitely you have to prepare uh, lighting selection sheets right if you use software you know uh, for that lighting designs then you can prepare uh, lux level distribution charts right then load calculation sheet how you arrive that particular transformer capacity generator capacity you have to have a justification for that that justification is given by the load calculation sheet then cable sizes, right? Transformer to MSB. What is the cable size, right? So, four core, 240, four core, 300, copper, aluminium, whatever the cable you select, you have to justify by this calculation sheet, right? Then short circuit calculation sheet. You might say at the transformer level, your short circuit level is, uh, you know, 25 kA, right? Then you might say, uh, you will say, tell, after calculating my MSB level, uh, short circuit level is 15 kA, right? So to justify this, you have to prepare short circuit level, uh, you know, calculation sheets. Then after that, you will prepare drawings, right? Schematic drawings, single line diagram of distribution boards, then lighting, socket outlet layout drawings, right? Generator drawings, transformer, earthing, lightning protection drawing these things you will definitely prepare you can prepare right then you have to prepare b of q bill of quantity and technical specification enable client to uh, get the uh, you know float the tender for the project right based on your uh, bill of quantity right bill of quantity of course uh, project qs also will support but for most of the electrical and mep application so uh, that respective uh, specialized consultant has to prepare BOQs in most of the cases because they are the technical experts, right? Then uh, technical specification also you have to prepare. So then client can uh, float a tender for the project, right? So as designers, you have to prepare all these things uh, during the uh, design process and after the design completion right so then now you know what are the uh,
documents that you should prepare and what is the process right now let's look at <coughs> uh, what are the important steps of a detailed designing of electrical installation honestly uh, we can't go uh, very much in detail because we have very limited time right actually this is a very lengthy subject we can discuss maybe you know 30 40 hours in this right if you want to do it properly with calculations and you know uh, uh, showing you how to refer the standards but here we don't have much time but if we have time in the future in a different uh, you know forum so we can uh, discuss this in detail but uh, here my uh, objective is to explain you what are the important steps then you can uh, study further on this and you know these steps you have to uh, you know uh, study further and further to have a proper design right so uh, step of detailed design actually uh, most important thing is in our design we have to prepare a principal lv scheme right? that is the first uh, uh, drawing document that you should prepare right in that uh, principal schematic uh, drawing right you should have a plan for the main power receiving arrangement how you are going to place the transport right how you are going to place the main distribution board right then arrangement of standby generator now you know uh, whether you need a standby generator for 100% backup or only the essential right during the design brief process discussing with the client right then arrangement of distribution boards you need to plan uh, at this stage right how many sdbs you want per flow right uh, how you are going to uh, transfer power from mb to M mdb to sdb is it by a cable or bus riser right those things you have to plan at this uh, level then how many uh, final distribution boards you need right so whether uh, one final distribution board is enough or you need more final distribution board per flow, right? By looking at the flow size, right? Then location of distribution board, number of distribution board, you can plan at this level. Then arrangement of other services such as air conditioning, fire, lift, water supply, also to be considered and you should give provision for these things, right? Types of distribution, of cable right whether you are going to lay cable underground or whether you are going to lay cable overhead right those things you need to plan at this stage because during your cable selection these things definitely will be matter right if you decide to have uh, underground cable or if you decide to have overhead cable the sizes will not be the same right due to certain factors i will explain the cable sizes will be different from underground to overhead right so therefore by considering these factors right this arrangement you have to plan a principal uh, lv scheme right at this stage then uh, i mentioned you that we need to have a plan for the voltage drop right right at the beginning right now according to the standard iet standard right I extracted this from IT, right? So you can't have your own voltage drop values, right? It is clearly defined in the standard. If you follow the standard, you have to uh, stick into these values, right? Uh, low voltage installation supplied direct from a public uh, low voltage distribution system. That means if you are connecting your system to a uh, authority transformer, right? If your system has only lighting, you can, go only up to three percent but if you have others like lighting you know air conditioning fire most of the cases we have this type of uh, conditions and right? we have all other equipment so then you can go up to five percent voltage drop right but if you are supplied if you have your own transformer right if you have a private transformer you have much more uh, flexibility tolerance tolerance right you can go up to six here you can go up to eight here <coughs> why is that because if you have your own uh, transformer if your capacity uh, total demand is more than thousand 
in sri lanka in local context you can have you you have to have a own transformer that cb will not supply a transformer for demand more than 1000 kb right if your demand is less than 1000 cb do uh, the cb does uh, lv metering and they uh, supply the transformer right they supply the transformer therefore we don't know what is the voltage level drop level at this point so therefore tolerance is low right but if you have a private transformer then you know exactly what is the voltage so you can make it zero at this point so therefore you can go up to a, uh, up to eight percent right so then most of the cases we have this type of conditions right only five percent so in that case you have this five percent means about 20 volt right three phase from transformer to your final terminal point right in between you have mdb you have sdb you have final distribution board right in between this distribution level you can plan your voltage drop here you can assign 0.5 percent now here i have assigned one percent here i have assigned 1.5 percent here i have assigned two percent because in this level you have so many cables right if you try to stick into a you know very small value uh, lower margin so then your cable sizes will be go up so when cable size go up at this level so many cable sizes so many cables we have to increase the size therefore i kept here i just propose here two percent okay in between only nothing much only few number of cables right then 1.5 then here to here you have maybe five six uh, number of cables right from mdb to sd therefore i kept there one percent and here to here definitely one cable or one bus riser right therefore their margin is very low voltage low. but somehow so there is no any hard and fast rule for that but you have to have a justification about the cable sizes and you know uh, economical impact on your selection so you can have this type of uh, distribution voltage drop distribution plan right based on your plan you can select your cables right so this is a uh, 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 overview of a you know conceptual schematic diagram right which we can prepare for a like you know seven three four or five six story building right you have a transformer here then you have you can plan your uh, mdb room somewhere close to the building right in the ground floor most probably right so then from there you can distribute to i will just enlarge this and show you right then you can uh, distribute to each floor from mdb right each floor here you have sdb right then from sdb you have uh, you can design final distribution board right here in this case i have considered three final distribution board one for air conditioning and one for other services lighting and power right so you can decide like this then there is an elevator so for that also i have considered a separate line dedicated line from msp right so then again we discuss about uh, other services uh, such as uh, you know fire or water and these things so i have kept here uh, provisions right for your mechanical services so at the uh, initial stage you can have a distribution conceptual distribution plan in this way right depending on your building uh, volume size right so if you feel that uh, you know uh, bus prices are much more economical than cable then instead of this so many number of cables here right you can have uh, bus prices right so that's up to the designer end of the day he has to have a you know uh, justification for his selection then uh, you can start the uh, load calculation right for load calculation you need to know what is the uh, demand for 
uh, lighting, then power outlets and other uh, uh, systems like uh, you know kitchen and AC, water pumps. So if you know these things, you can start the detailed load calculation, right? So in detailed load calculation, you have to consider diversity, right? So this is what I extracted from the IET standard. So it says for economical and reliable design. So designer has to uh, is, uh, designer has to calculate the maximum dis uh, demand by considering diversity factors, right? So this, uh, standard itself uh, stress us to use diversity factors and calculate the maximum design. But nowhere in the design specified the diversity factors because if I feel if design, uh, if standard is specified this, then everybody is sticking to that. But the load profile, you know, operation differ from project to project, right? It, it, it completely depend on one type of a project to another type of project. Right. You can't use the same diversity factors what you use for hospital to a factory, right? Operation patterns, everything different. So therefore, standard doesn't specify this. It's a it's an encourage us to use diversity factors. So it is our responsibility to analyze the diversity factors, do an evaluation with the operation team and decide diversity factors on our own, right? So, so in load calculation, there are important things that connected load, right? Connected load means sum of all the loads connected into the uh, system. If we have 100 lights, uh, 20 AC, so sum of the total is called as connected load. Maximum demand is the demand that uh, the system consume at a given time, right? So always maximum demand less than the connected load. Or sometimes if it's a small project, so these two can be equal, right? So to calculate maximum demand from uh, connected load, we need factors, right? First factor is demand factor. Demand factor means uh, all the electrical equipment does not work at its maximum level. Now, if you take an air conditioning unit, right? This air conditioning unit will consume its maximum power during the startup time. Then after that running, so it definitely consumes less than this, right? So there is a reduction in the power demand, right? So this is called demand factor, right? Then if you take an elevator, right? Elevator work five minutes, then it will uh, you know, stay uh, without working, maybe 20 minutes, then again, two minutes, then again, one hour, right? So there is a uh, loading pattern. So therefore, the full load doesn't apply into our uh, calculation, right? So therefore, we use a factor for that. That factor we call uh, demand factor, right? Then we have another factor that is we call diversity factor, right? So diversity factor comes into picture because if we have uh, 10 units in same load uh, application, all 10 might not work simultaneously, right? Eight will work or seven will work. So therefore we need to uh, do a compensation for that. If we just add all 10 equipment, which is connected to the system, it is not reasonable. At any given time, all 10 might not work, right? So therefore we use diversity we use factor for that, which is called diversity. Diversity comes into the picture because all the equipment will not work simultaneously at a given time, right? So this is just a, you know, uh, analysis, right? If we have uh, three motors, M1, M2, M3, then again M1 here, right? just to give you an understanding. And then again, you have M2 here, then M1 here, right? So this is the uh, maximum uh, load, right? So then 50, the sum of all these is 50, that is connected load, right? If you apply uh, demand factor, 
that all will not work at the same load. So let's say this is four, this is seven. So then once you apply demand factor, it will be 38, right? If you apply diversity, so same unit will not work at the same time. So this three will not work. So then most probably this will be the maximum demand, right? 23. So your connected load is 50, but your demand is uh, 23. Uh, just an example to get an uh, uh, understanding about these factors, right? So it is half of the connected load, right? Therefore, your maximum demand will not be the connected load, right? If you take uh, connected load as your maximum demand, so then it's a kind of a, uh, an oversight, right? So actually, uh, demand factor we apply only for the final distribution board level because after final distribution board level, we don't have demand factor, right? But diversity, we apply level by level, right? Each level, we can apply diversity depending on the uh, number of distribution boards and uh, depending on the operation principle of the uh, system, right? Now here, uh, lighting, small power, right? motors, kitchen equipment, we apply demand factor, right? Elevator, water heater, right? Very small demand factor. AC equipment also demand factor. And lighting, no demand factor, right? Light normally, if it works, works at its full load, right? Demand factor is one. Then again, final distribution board level, we apply diversity, right? Then again, this level also, we apply diversity. But here in this case, I have taken it as one because I'm not going to apply diversity for the SDB level. But again, I have applied a diversity for the final distribution board level. Right? Depending on the project to project, uh, by considering its uh, operation principle and type of loads and you know, number of DBs, you can decide the diversity factor. Remember that uh, demand factor we apply only for the final uh, equipment, final distribution board, but diversity we apply from distribution level to distribution level right so here right this is the uh, connected load then demand factor final distribution board diversity factor right then after that this is each distribution board uh, diversity factor then we can find out what is the maximum demand based on the maximum demand we can calculate transformer capacity then based on that, uh, generator capacity also we can calculate if we are going to back up 100% or 50%, whatever. Right? So then uh, we have to run fast because uh, we have a very limited time and there are a lot Mr. of Patun. Mr. Patun? Yes. Yeah, so sorry to disturb you. And if you, yeah, true that we have run fast at the same time, if you can take two minutes to just to brief down in single as so it, it could be highly appreciated. The ah, right. decisions what we have done good so far. Right, right, right. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Then up in the ten ten katakare, oh mother, maximum demand dek hoyaga nikila. Mam mam, I'm just brief karana, maximum demand dek hoyadi, I'm the same, up in connected load dek a kiani, a system make a connect with a tiano, oh, my load sola, a katua. The maximum demand is the same connected load degraded. Adua Biak done. A PA take a Samanaka Lagato, a design nigger, over design. If you go to a bit of factors, they got the consider Karan, a Katamai demand factor, a utilization factor, a K in me, a make equipment a Kakuma, a K maximum rated value looking at a Karan at this. A card level laking at a Kansa, a PA compensate for no effect. If you go to a bit of Tavatiana, Koda equipment. A equipment hamakama amati same with the radar. Pick a flow like a light panahati on a light pan, light pia pen to make a sarek of a decor. The rekatapi compensate crana factory cut use can not be a kind of diversity factory. The diversity factory had demand factory had dala, a pillow ticket, calculate. Emma calculate kala maximum demand decorata, then we can find out what is the transfer capacity. The next is cable selection. Then up uh, when we uh, uh, just uh, look at our distribution, right? We have our transport here. Then after that, we have our MDB. 
right? Then we have sub distribution board. If you can remember our schematic diagram, there we have right, so many sub distribution board. Then after that, each sub distribution board, uh, under each sub distribution board, there are final distribution board. Right? It depends on the uh, system. Right? Then we need to calculate cable size. What is the cable size from transformer to MDB? Right? MDB to each uh, sub distribution board so we have to calculate the cable sizes right cable size when we calculate cable size there are three factors to be considered current carrying capacity right how much of current can carry this cable right based on that we decide the cable size then next one voltage drop third one short circuit level with standability and right? let's look at what is the current carrying capacity how we calculate it right so now uh, let's uh, draw a simple single line diagram now let's say we have one distribution board here right? let's say mdb and we have a breaker and then we have our next distribution board right? let's say sdb1 now we want to calculate this cable size, right? This particular DB has a load. load If this load is 50 kilowatt, then by using power equation, right? P equals root three VI uh, cos five, we can calculate the current, current of this distribution board, this particular load, current of this particular load, right? अपने में कारण टेक कैलकुलेट कराने के लिए पावर इक्वेशन ने आला अभी तो एक इन्हें एम्पीयर हत्या वाई किया है इट्स ए सेवन एम्पीयर सो दिस सेवन एम्पीयर कंसीडर डेस डिजाइन का आईबी है अब इट्स सेवन एम्पी सॉरी सेवेंटी एम्पीयर तो इफ यू हैव डिजाइन करंट ऑफ सेवेंटी एम्पीयर देन वी शुड डिजाइन अ ब्रेक Newton strip. So, your protective device should be more than this. If we have 70, the next available breaker size, let's say 100 ampere. 100 ampere breaker we can select here. Right? Then we calculated the current. We call it calculated current. It should be more than this one. Right? This is we call IB. Sorry, IN. This is IN. This is IB, right? Design current, protective device, uh, current capacity is IN, right? Then we have to calculate a, a current value. We call it IC. IC equals IN, right? Protective device uh, current rating IN divided by certain factors. Here we have CA, we have CG. We have CI, CF, right? CA means temperature correction factor. Cables are designed to operate in a certain temperature, right? Maybe 25. But we are using this cable in 35 Celsius or 30 Celsius, sometimes 20 Celsius. So then current rating will change, right? Not when it's used, not at the design uh, temperature value. Then the cable manufacturer gives this value, particular value, which can uh, you know take by this cable by considering there are no more cable along with this cable, both sides of the cable. So he considers, manufacturer considers only this cable runs in the cable tree or whatever. But in ideal case, we have so many cables, right? We have three cables, four cables. So depending on number of cables, we have to apply a grouping factor. We call it grouping factor. Then we calculate IC, right? This is, we call calculated current. Calculated current, we calculate uh, IN divided by these two uh, factors. We don't use this CI and CF mostly because CI for insulation correction factor and CF for protective device correction factor. When we were using fuses and others, we use this factor. And if you have so many 
you know thermal insulated environments we use this factor but for our day to day applications we don't have this uh, factors much right therefore we have ca and cg so then you have to find correct ca and cg and by using that you have to calculate c a right when you apply these two factors let's say you c ic is uh, let's say 125 right if you are getting 125 after dividing this then you have to find a value more than this from the cable data sheet for that you have to refer the regulation right in regulation iet uh, in the appendices you have these values right so based on that you have to select a value let's say you have a value uh, which is more than 125 let's say there is a value 140 and cable sizes let's say 4 4 uh, 50. So then for this case, the cable that we should select is 4450, right? That is how we select cable for the current carrying capacity. So I will show you a few uh, tables, charts, right, which you can see in the regulation for your uh, calculations, right? So these values you have to get from the regulation because otherwise, from person to person, calculation results might change, right? So then it will be a problem sometimes. Okay. Now here you have uh, these, uh, you know, values. Now this is in this table, right? Each table has a table uh, number, right? Each table has a number here, right? You need to refer these numbers. Now here, this is the temperature correction factors, right? So this cable is designed to use in 30. Now, suppose you are designing for 30, uh, especially here in Colombo, around Colombo project, the temperature, ambient temperature is 30. Then there is no, you know, uh, factor for that. Factor is one, right? If you are using this for like uh, projecting, um, let's say, trinchomoly, right? That is also cable to cable different, right? This is uh, thermo uh, setting cable, that means XLP cable. This is PVC cable, right? You have to refer the correct uh, value and you have to get the correct value by referring correct information, right? If you are doing a project in Dubai, right? So they are in most of the cases. The design temperature that they use is 50 Celsius. Right? So then, in that case, you derate so much. If you are using XLP cable, right, you divide it by 0.25. So you derate this cable too much. Right? Then you have this installation method. Right? You need to know what is the installation method also you use. Right? So mostly we use this installation method, perforated cable tray, this formation, no, this formation. E and F, right? These installation methods also matters for your, uh, you know, uh, data, right? So this is the current carrying capacity uh, table, right? In this current carrying capacity table, you have, uh, right? Again, table number. So you need to refer the correct table number, right? This table number is 4D, 4D, 4A, right? This is for multi-core 70, means PVC cable, right? If it is XLP cable, then this is not the table, right? Then again, here you have installation method. You have to select correct installation method. If you use, uh, if you run cable in air, so you have to use this, right? So based on that, so this is the current carrying uh, capacity value, right? Uh, IT. Right. Based on your calculation, IC, so you have to select a value more than that. So then corresponding cable size also you can see here. Right. So that is how you refer the tables, right? So we don't have much time to do examples. So but when we have time, so we can go through this. Right. So then voltage drop. So that is the next thing, right? So due to the resistance of the cable from one point to another point, there is a voltage drop due to this resistance, right? 
So voltage drop value is given in the table, in the same standard table, milli volt per ampere per meter. So it, they give, if one ampere pass through this cable, for one meter distance, there will be so much of milliampere voltage drop, right? If you know the length, right, from particular point that you want from two, then you can calculate the total length. And if you know the load, then you multiply it by the load. Let's say this distance is 20 meters for the deep, two dB is what we consider, then Let's say this value is four, right? In the table, four multiplied by 20 meters multiplied by what is your design current? We just assume that it is 70, right? So this is the voltage drop value in millivolt, right? You will get so much of voltage drop value. In our initial design, we decided from this level to this level, our maximum voltage drop should be two volts or four volts, whatever. If you are within this value, then you can keep this cable, whatever we selected, 4, 4, 50 millimeter squared, as the cable, which satisfied the voltage drop as well. Right? If this cable does not satisfy, let's say your voltage drop value is two, and if you are getting here, let's say uh, this is, let's say four volts, then you can't use this cable. Though the cable is satisfied the current carrying capacity, you have to change the cable because it does not satisfy the voltage drop. So you have to go to the next size. Right? Likewise, you have to uh, select the cable. Then the third is short circuit with standability capacity. Right? So when there is a short circuit condition, right? even though it satisfied current and voltage drop, but suddenly, if there is a voltage, uh, short circuit condition between these two dBs, right? If, if there is short circuit condition, there will be huge temperature rise, right? This temperature rise decides by this equation. We call it adiabatic equation, right? K squared, S squared equal I squared short circuit into T. T is the operating time of the protective device here. Right during that time, this breaker will tip immediately, right within a fraction of a second. But until such time, there will be a temperature rise. But this cable should be able to withstand that temperature rise. Right, that can be uh, calculated here. And then by using this equation, you can calculate what is the uh, is here is this uh, cross section area of the cable. You can calculate and see what is the required short cross-section area, minimum cross-section area, which satisfies this condition, right? If 50 millimeter, what we selected above, is satisfied this year, if you get a value uh, less than 50, then it is satisfied the third case also, right? So then you can uh, use the cable what you select. If it, is, if it does not satisfy, then you have to change the cable. So that's what I mentioned in the uh, design process if it fails at one level then you have to go back and revise it and come back again right so then our third uh, next important calculation is short circuit level calculation right there are different types of short circuit condition now here all phases are short circuited so this is the equivalent uh, circuit and this is the current right by using vector uh, you know, analysis, you can derive this equation, right? I'm not going to do this here. So then this current equals U, U means this voltage, line to line voltage divided by root three, divided by equivalent impedance, right? In this case, then we have many few other short circuit conditions, right? There can be uh, face to face, in a uh, star network, right? So this is the equivalent circuit and this is the equation. And there can be phase to neutral, right? This is the uh, equation, short circuit uh, value, 
right? So, so we, we have different short circuit conditions and different equation. And there is another one. So all in these cases, this is the worst case. This is the equation that we get highest value. So therefore, we do short circuit level for this condition, all three phase to ground, right? This is the short circuit condition we consider because that is the worst case. All other uh, cases, if you look at the equations all in all other cases, Right here, 2C. Here, Z plus Z delta. So there are some other factors. So therefore, all other values uh, less than this. So therefore, short circuit calculation, we use this equation, right? This is the line voltage, root three. This is equivalent impedance, right? Impedance equals resistance R squared plus X squared square root, right? This is the a short circuit uh, value at this particular point. Make the money short circuit value with a point. It's a quarter when we want to calculate after the calculate current on a short circuit value with a carry point distribution network again, right? Distribution network again with a more carry point calculate current on now. We don't want to calculate here. The topic method is voltage. If it is three phase system, 400 time voltage. The method is equivalent impedance. Equivalent impedance. If you know the equivalent impedance here, we can calculate short circuit level at this point by using this equation. The method is point by point method. Within the Hamadi same of the equivalent impedance, equivalent impedance, it's not difficult. Up with unknown transformer, a resistance value, a reactance value, a make cable, a by referring cable catalog, up to one resistance value, a catalog, a gate, you know, resistance value, a key. It was a reactance value, a key. As a made the Katukara, made the Katukara, methane to the inner. Total resistance reactance the Goyagata. It was a Z the Goyagan no may equivalent value the gay R squared plus X squared by square root dala. Methana voltage Jacobidan no. Let's say it is 400 root 3. May value the ma methan short circuit level the good. Because if you want to go further down, may resistance reactance value the gata may cable the key resistance reactance value the gay. May level like a total resistance a reactance. That's a may level like impedance value by using this equation. But make at a distribution board theorem, make cable like a resistance reactance at Kerrigan at Kerrigan We get short circuit level to the point where we go. Then up it on the air and the at the mind, make at Kerrigan at Kerrigan equivalent impedance a value. Equivalent impedance value in a key and may result a card. That means short circuit level at this point is more than this point. Okay? Short circuit level of this point is less than this point. System make a uh, down uh, when we go further down and down, down to the system, short circuit level goes down. Transformer level like a mind, we have the highest uh, short circuit level, right? So that is how we calculate short circuit level. So you, you need to know resistance reactance value of this transformer cable. So if you know that, then you can simply apply this equation and calculate, right? So then we talk about protection coordination, right? Let's look at briefly what is protection coordination. Then when there is a fault, methana fault immediate upstream breaker trip mode, right? Only this breaker should trip. These, these breakers should not trip. If these breakers are trip means this system is not properly coordinated. Protection scheme is not properly coordinated. So this is not a good system. But here, when there is a fault in this point, only this breaker trips. That means this uh, distribution system is properly coordinated, right? That, that we call protection coordination, right? Then let's look at how we can do. Now we have, you know, this uh, time inverse curve, right? Methan current taker. 
me me axis ke current ka me axis ke thamai tripping time ka thiye then samanya characteristic curve is something like this right me kala we call it uh, thermal tripping uh, region ne ka this is short circuit tripping region then protection coordination ne ka honda ta vela na it should be like this me ekak curve ekak ka ekat ekak overlap wenna be etara meya trip wenna kota meya trip wenni me hema tanaka dima every zone so thermal zone and also uh, short circuit zone me hema ekema properly separated out means properly coordinated etara meya ta fault ekak wela wen this breaker trip doesn't happen to any of this breaker right? but in this one just have a look right this this one this zone is properly coordinated me show uh, overload zone but short circuit zone is not properly coordinated etakota podi current ekak kela overload ekak kela trip wenakota this might work properly apita wage prashna godak kelawata ambela athi if you are working in the industry you would have experience enough සමහරට මේන්ටනන්ස් කට්ටිය කියන ඔය සර් ඊය ට්‍රිප් වුණ නැහැ මේක හැබැයි මේ අද ට්‍රිප් වුණා ඒක පාරට කියලා. එතකොට අර ඕවර්ලෝඩ් රීජන් එකේ කරන්ට් එකක් ඇවිල්ලා ඒ ඒ රීජන් එකේ ෆෝල්ට් එකක් ආවොත් ඉට් ඩසන්ට්. ඉට් ඉස් කෝඩිනේටඩ් ඇට් දිස් ලෙවල් මේ ලයික් හියර්. බට් ෂෝට් සර්කිට් කරන්ට් ලෙවල් එකේ හයි කරන්ට් එකක් වෙනකොට ඉට් ඉස් නොට් කෝඩිනේටඩ්. දැන් ඕල් ද බ්‍රේකර්ස් देयर ඉස් අ චාන්ස් ඔෆ් ට්‍රිපින් අදර් බ්‍රේකර්ස් ඇස්. බට් හියර් ඉට් ඉස් ප්‍රොපර්ලි කෝඩිනේටඩ්. රයිට්? ඉතින් මේ ෂෝට් සර්කිට් මේ ප්‍රොටෙක්ෂන් කෝඩිනේෂන් එක අපිට මේ වගේ ග්‍රැෆිකල් මෙතඩ් දෙකකින් කරන්න පුළුවන් ග්‍රාෆ් බයි ග්‍රාෆ් අරගෙන එහෙම නැත්නම් අදර්වයිස් වි හැව් සොෆ්ට්වෙයාස් ඩෙවලොප් බයි සුජිය මැනුෆැක්චරර්ස් ඒ සොෆ්ට්වෙයා එකක් පාවිච්චි කරනවා නම් ඒක තියෙන කර්ව්ස් අරගෙන සොෆ්ට්වෙයා එකට දාලා මොන බ්‍රේකරේ මොන කර්ව් එකෙන්ද මේක අපිට බලන්න පුළුවන් කියලා ඒ ඇනලිසිස් එක අපිට කරන්න පුළුවන් රයිට් සෝ දැන් Uh, you can uh, change the curves now there are breakers uh, on the, the good breakers there are breakers the breakers there are two types fixed type breakers adjustable type breakers. this is an adjustable type breaker me breaker ekey apita curve eka select karala wenas karaganna we can change the curve right there are breakers fixed type mehem ekak ne eka eka curve ekak vitarai thiyenne etakota in that case you have to change the break when a curve ekak thiyena breaker ekata yannone it is not coordinated me wage breaker ekak api use karana we can change the setting and achieve the coordination right you the now nowadays mostly we use software as but those days we graphical by using graphical method we did this analyze whether it is coordinated or not right so then api den design ekata awashya steps tika katha kara voltage drop එක plan කරන විදිය කොහොමද plan කරන්නේ i එකේ important right එතකොට mdp level එකට කීයද voltage drop එක sdp එකට කීයද final distribution level එකට කීයද අපි ඒ assign කරන value එක achieve වෙනවද බං අපි select කරන cable එක right ඊට පස්සේ අපි principal schematic එකක් ඇඳ ගත්තා කොහොමද distribution plan එක එන්න කියලා ඒක discuss කරා ඊළඟ load calculation එක කරා diversity factors දාලා utilization factor එහෙම නැත්නම් demand factor එක දාලා ඊට පස්සේ cable selection එක කරා three criterias ගැන බලලා current carrying capacity එක voltage drop එක සහ short circuit එකට withstand කරනවද කියලා බැලුවා ඊට පස්සේ අපි short circuit level calculation කරන විදිය බැලුවා එක එක methods වල short circuit වෙන්න පුළුවන් phase to phase ground එක phase එකට තව phase එකක් phase to neutral ඒ හැම එකෙක්ම worst case එක එන්නේ all three phases round short circuit level එක. එතකොට ඒකට equation එකක් තියෙනවා. A equation එක දාලා A equation එකට තියෙන voltage එකයි equivalent impedance එක. එතකොට equivalent impedance එක කියන්නේ අපේ system එක ගත්තාම system එකේ මොකක් හරි තැනක short circuit එක level එක හොයන්න ඕන නම් අපේ upstream එකේ ඉඳලා එතෙන් දෙනක equivalent resistance reactance දෙක එකතු කරලා ඒකේ square root එකේ ස්ක්වයර්ඩ් එකේ ස්ක්වයර් රූට් එක ගත්තාම ඉක්වලන් ඉම්පිඩන්ස් එක එනවා ඒ ඉම්පිඩන්ස් එක දාලා අපිට පුළුවන් ඒ අදාළ තැන ෂෝට් සර්කිට් ලෙවල් එක හොයන්න ඒකට අපි කියන්නේ පොයින්ට් බයි පොයින්ට් මෙතඩ් එක කියලා 
Nairah ini mewah. Mau apa itu? Awas sapi ada desain detail design stage jadi apa kerana mana step step apa itu mewah ni korang discuss pula tu. Then next let's look at now we discuss in the bathroom. Yes. Mr. Bethel, yeah, sorry to disturb that. We we also have a small message because it's nine o'clock right now. So we yes. will uh, we will put the we will put our attendance sheet in Google form in a Google form format in chat box as well as the YouTube streamer. Uh, we will keep one uh, 15 minutes window just to mark your attendance. So you will not have attendance marker on one thing. We don't have a copy open to the chat box is a YouTube live streamer cake attendance attendance mark on the car now in live now. Mr. Bhattan, thank you very much. Right. Okay. So let's let's continue. Then uh, we discuss about uh, using cable in our principal schematic. Instead of cable, we can use bus risers as well. Right. Bus risers. There are two types. One is uh, horizontal bus riser. From one panel to another panel, horizontally we can use bus risers. Then we have vertical bus risers. Right? Instead of cable. Now in our example, for uh, five six story building, we uh, try to install five six cables right like this but if you use a bus riser like this we have tap off in each floor right so we rate the bus riser for the total demand of the all four floors and we can tap from each floor to the uh, sub distribution board right so one thing we have to remember that bus riser has a cost by itself right so therefore you have to do a uh, cost analysis which is cheaper. Right? There are advantages of using bus prices, right? Bus prices is flexible, easy to use, but cost is high. But if you have so many cables and so much of lens, right? Seven story, eight story building, then bus price cost will be less than this cable cost. In that case, you can use cable. But even in that case also for some critical loads like elevators, right? And other critical, uh, you know, applications, fire application, and those things we normally don't tap from uh, bus risers. In that case, for you know, complex project, we have separate emergency bus risers. So there are methods, but usually uh, bus riser we don't use for critical loads. Right. So then, uh, not only the building size, the load also matters to decide whether bus riser or cable suitable for this right bus risers if we just talk about bus risers we have different types right this is air bus air, compact air type bus riser right here the insulation is an air gap right so then we have sandwich type bus riser there you have a, a insulation material right all bus risers are all conductors are you know compact so size is small compared to the previous one and also current capacity also high, right here, slightly less than the above. Then we have uh, power and lighting bus bar trunk. If you are designing a you know, big factory, garment factory or something like that, there you have so many light fittings. So if you try to use indi cable, individual cable for each and every lighting circuit, it will be very costly, right? It is very easy to use uh, power uh, bus trunking, lighting bus trunking for that type of application, right? One bus trunking, you can connect 200, 300 lights. Okay. So therefore, bus risers are very uh, flexible, uh, easy to use. There are a lot of advantages, right? It is very simple and continuation also there. You can continue from one place to another place. You want to introduce another, uh, you know, uh, point in between, so you can have a tap off and you can accommodate it easy. But you have to plan it at the initial stage itself, right? Here, there is a small analysis cable and uh, bus trunking. So there is a big uh, reduction in the weight and also uh, loss, right? Uh, distribution loss also less in bus transfer. So those are the advantages uh, we have, right? So uh, same like cable bus risers also, you can calculate the voltage drop, everything. So here I have just shown uh, technical data sheets, right? So the voltage drops values are given. So whatever you want in respect to power factor, right? you can calculate uh, same like uh, cables, voltage drop, short circuit level, everything can be calculated. 
right? This is just to visualize two uh, installations right here, uh, bus uh, cable. So almost similar installation here by bus bar trunking. You see here, space is very less, it is more neat, right? But here it's a bit of a congested, so it consumes a lot of space, right? So for high rise buildings where you have uh, space constraints, right? Bus rise uh, will be a very good solution. So once you do all these uh, analysis and calculation, then you can complete your schematic diagrams with details, right? You can mention your cable selection. Uh, based on your cable selection, you can mention your cable sizes, right? Then distribution, you can complete with more details once you finish all about steps, right? Then your single line also, uh, generator capacities, transformer capacities, you can have values for this, right? At the initial beginning stage, you don't have values, but here you have values for each and every breaker, right? So then uh, short circuit capacity is given here, right? So all the technical data you can fill now, right? Now let's look at quickly final distribution board uh, design. Uh, final distribution board level, like a bit of good, mostly the lighting and power, right? Lighting design before the lighting design, we had to calculate how many number of lights we need. There are two methods. First one is lumen method, may equation we can calculate. And second one is we can use this uh, software dialax, right? The dialax use karot, you can get the distribution, you can get the light uh, layout, everything you can get here. If you use this manual method, so you have to do it manually. So once you calculate the number of light fittings. Right, then you can prepare a lighting fixture schedule. Then you can prepare lighting layout drawing. Then you can arrange the switching pattern according to the functionality. Then you have to take into consideration energy saving aspects when you design switching. Right. So then, so once you do a proper design, so you can prepare this type of a, a lighting layout drawing. Now in this lighting layout drawing, right, you you have uh, number of lights right, equally distributed and circuits are marked here right which dv is connected to this circuit details are given each light is given with a notation right then you have uh, uh, switches right and each switch you know which light is controlled all the details are given now here you have final distribution board two final distribution board this set of lights and this set of light so all the details are uh, clearly given in this drawing. So if you do your design to the extent uh, what we discussed, then you can have uh, drawings in this nature, right? So that means it's a quite uh, completed uh, design drawing. Right? So then uh, we have uh, power designs. So power also, right? Mostly nowadays we use uh, 13 ampere only. For general purpose and special purpose, right? And there are two methods of uh, wiring for socket outlet, radial and ring circuit, right? So, so this is what uh, standard specified. If you are using a, a ring circuit, your breaker should be 32 ampere, cable should be 2.5. It can cover 100 meter squared area with any number of socket outlet. If it is radial. There are two methods, right? 20 or 32. If you use 20, 2.5, 50 meters squared. If you use 32, cable should be 4 and 75 meters squared, right? You can have any number of socket towers. Then you have to consider other aspects as well, like uh, if you are installing a socket tablet in the bathroom, that right, you have to refer certain standard uh, regulations, so which covers in uh, a special location. Uh, IT regulation, right? Swimming pool. You can't have normal socket outlet or anything in this area, zone zero area. If you want to have something underwater, right? This area where water has, so you have to go for uh, ELV type uh, uh, outlets, right? 12 volt outlet. So those things also you need to take into consideration. I want to bring your attention to these things. Okay? So then we have certain other internal. Uh, component also in the distribution. So one is surge protection. So light, depending on the lightning protection scheme, 
we divide building into certain zones, right? So based on the zone, we use, we install uh, SPDs, right? SPDs, there are three types, type one, type two, type three. Type one we use for the main distribution board level, type two for the sub-distribution board level, and type three for the uh, final distribution board level, right? So these current capacities, everything, we have to calculate and use proper device, right? Then UPS also, uh, sometimes our project, right? We will have operation theaters, uh, data centers. So then we need UPS also, right? UPS has different components, inverters, batteries, static switches, right? We have to do a proper calculation based on the UPS demand and find out what is the suitable UPS, right? And also UPS uh, based on the connection uh, type and equipment configuration, batteries, inverters, and static switch. It divided into three uh, modes, right? Offline mode, uh, interactive mode, line interactive mode, and online mode. So this is the most, uh, uh, you know, mostly used for critical applications, right? Like operation theaters, data center. There you have a static switch. So downtime is almost zero micro uh, seconds, right? So then uh, you have to do power factor correction also, right? Due to uh, you know uh, inductive and capacitive load, so power factor may not be unity O equal to unity. In that case, right? There will be a system inefficiency. You have to pay for reactive power. So then you need to uh, correct power factor by installing capacitor bands, right? Uh, if you can remember in the single line diagram, which I showed to you earlier, also there was a power factor uh, correction capacitor band, right? So this you can calculate by using this, uh, you know, uh, geometric and with the angle sine cos. And also there are easy methods and you can find a table like this, right? There you can, uh, find out a factor, right, for the correction of uh, power factor. This is the actual power factor, and this is the desired value, and this is the factor. If you multiply your uh, active power by this factor, you can find out what is the reactive power you want, right? So there are easy methods also. Then uh, next thing is uh, uh, harmonics, so harmonics also come into the system due to fluorescent light and switch mode power supplies and other things. So the uh, because of harmonic, uh, the waveforms get distorted. So then uh, the, there can be a lot of issues like heating issues, um, uh, nuisance stripping, right equipment failures. So a standard specifies us these are the uh, values that we should maintain, right, for general system third harmonic distortion should be less than 5%. And this is for voltage and these are the values which we should follow for current, right? So based on that, we can calculate and find out what is the uh, required uh, uh, harmonic filter suitable for different applications, right? So now I have come to the end of the session. Last part is uh, testing and permissioning, another five minutes, right? So testing and commissioning also very important. So designers involvement is still there in the testing and commissioning, but most of the project for testing and commissioning, a new team comes, right? Even at a design again, what up inputs gun no testing and commissioning stage again, right? In the testing and commissioning um, uh, stage, uh, first we have to prepare testing procedure and test sheets. Test sheet, the guy, testing procedure, the guy prepare kalla. They can approve Karaganda uh, from the other engineers, right? Then after that, there are uh, three stages. First stage is pre-commissioning. We call it visual inspection. A visually balala drawing design nekata commissioning installation nekatiela verify karagana. Then after that, we do our measurements, testing by using instrument, and then finally we check the functionality with the required functionalities they are no right a visual inspection ne the api me wage chart ek thin balanawa erection method is done according to what we plan then conductor termination is 
done properly right tightness is there then identification is there right the color code whether we have followed brown black gray the color code correctly then cable whether we have installed the cable correct size of the cable and correct combination for four single core aluminium copper conductors based on the uh, design right we need to verify then cable size specification right so the building is properly sealed or not right cable open these things we go to the site testing and commissioning team and verify uh, visually whether it is done or not right then we have to put uh, warning signs warning stickers for panel boards and other things right unauthorized access we should uh, uh, prohibit it right in certain areas so that warning uh, tag out tag out should be there diagrams everything we check whether those are there or not whether the real protective devices are installed rcd signs installed or not we checked during this phase right then after that we start if everything is okay if there is any issue then we correct it if everything is okay then we start uh, uh, testing by using equipment right first test is the testing can be divided into two parts right first set of testing we do when the system is in dead condition before energize this test has to be done then after pass this test we can energize the system and do the rest of the testing right first test is a continuity test that when we install cable if you have seen uh, big projects right there are so many cables run in the cable tray so sometimes uh, the cable which should go for motor one might go to motor two right so we need to check whether it is properly done to the right equipment from the panel right so this is the way we just loop a non cable at the panel end and we check the same cable whether the continuity is there if we get zero resistance that means the cable is correct if we do not get the uh, zero uh, resistance here that means this is not the cable what we showed it. that means it has gone to another uh, wrong equipment right this has to be verified first then after that uh, next method is insulation resistance when we install cable so many cable when we pull cable here and there insulation might be damaged if there is a small damage it might lead to a uh, earth leakage if there is a big damage it might lead to a short circuit uh, fault right so it has to be checked by using uh, this mega test and ensure that there is no uh, insulation damage so if these two are okay then we can energize the system once we energize the system we can check and see whether the polarities are okay right so now if you take a socket outlet there are three cables right earth cable is there line and neutral is there so line and neutral might be interchange right wrongly installed into another one right so that whether those mistakes are there or not we can check by using this polarity test right if there is such a mistake then we have to correct it then we calculated short circuit level right short circuit value when we design okay MDB level, this should be the short circuit value, SDB level, this should be the short circuit level, likewise. So now by using this instrument, we can find out what is the loop impedance, right? Now loop impedance, we calculate it. Now we can check and see whether we get the correct loop impedance value or not. And if you are getting what we estimated, then there is a problem, right? We have to correct it. And there are instruments we can straight away calculate the short circuit level as well now it's in certain level each level we calculated the short circuit level transformer level 25k then mdb level 15k sdb level 10k we can check whether we are getting those values or not right if you are getting those values so without any problem then that means our design is okay and installation is done according to the design right then we have to check the functionality of rcbs right uh, we have uh, earth leakage protective device right rcb there are different current rating right sensitivity 30 milliampere 100 milliampere if rcd is healthy this rcd should trip before a given time right if it trips after a certain time that means this protection doesn't work right 
So we should check whether the particular RCB is tripped before the uh, upper limit, right? If it trips before the upper limit, then we can consider this RCB as a healthy RCB. Otherwise, we have to change the RCB, right? Then we have to check the uh, soil resistance of uh, uh, earth. Uh, electrode, lightning protection electrode, right? There are methods. So these are the instruments that we use, and we should check with the, the soil resistance value, whatever we get uh, is less than 10 ohm or less than 1 ohm. What is specified? We need to verify it. Right? After we tested the all, we have to uh, prepare a report, right? So in IET regulation, there is a, a format is given. So we have to follow this format. Then after that, uh, we prepare this report. Report has to be certified by a chartered engineer. And it should be approved by a chartered engineer before we complete the testing and commissioning phase, right? If everything is okay in order, then we can hand over this project to the client. So then client can start occupying the building uh, once we complete the testing and commission. So these are the things uh, what I was planning to discuss with you. So certain areas I had to run fast uh, due to uh, time limitations, but I hope I discuss uh, with you and I highlighted the important areas where you should uh, pay your attention, right? So at this point, I uh, stop uh, my uh, discussions or then, then it's over to the uh, Mediator, if there are questions, then we can discuss. Thank you. Thank you, Engineer Patton. Thank you very much. And obviously, it was a very heavy content, and I'm sure that people are fully exhausted. And thank you very much. Still, yes. you have made it very clear. And Sanjay, can we give a few? Because uh, we have very limited time. So, shall we give uh, straight away a few hand raises? Yeah. Sure, Mr. Shall we give the opportunities to, yes, please. Shall we give these opportunities to, we'll start from Yasindu. Uh, okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, there's a, U, a UPS, like, um, uh, I'm asking about UPS detail. Mm -hmm. There's UPS with uh, 10 kVA, the output mm -hmm. is 10 kVA, so uh, we have to, give the supply to the UPS and uh, what is the detail that we should check like uh, the, the amount of power we should give to the UPS how, how can we uh, get an idea about that yeah actually now UPS you have two parts first thing is raw power you have to input raw power to the UPS right then UPS convert it to uh, the UPS power right and then it supplies to the equipment which we connect for the uh, UPS power required. First, you have to do an estimation and calculate what is the UPS power required. Now, if you are telling that it is uh, 10 kVA, let's say you have a set of computers and if you multiply this, uh, calculate the demand of these computers by using, you know, again, the same thing you have to follow here, diversity factors and others. If you arrive, the UPS required UPS is 10 kVA, then you have to select a 10 kVA UPS first, right? So the UPS capacity is 10 kVA, that is one thing. Then next thing is uh, you have to decide what is the backup time. When there is a power failure, you have to have a battery to backup. So this battery power transferred again to the load through the uh, inverter, right? So the inverter capacity is 10 kVA. Then battery power you need to calculate and decide based on the backup time you want, whether you want it for 10 minutes or half an hour. Based on that, your battery uh, capacity varies and number of batteries will be varying, right? Then after that, you have 10 kVA UPS. That means you have to supply through your raw power 10 kVA. For that, you have to have a 10 kVA setup. 10 kVA means roughly it's about like, you know, less than 20 ampere. You know? uh, it's about uh, 16, 17 ampere. So then you need about uh, 20 ampere input breaker to uh, provide uh, raw power for that. 
So that is how you should calculate the UPS system. Battery backup time varies. Actually, battery capacity varies depending on the uh, number of minutes or uh, duration you want to back up. All right. Thank you. Okay, Farik Kahmad. Shall we go, Farik Kahmad? Please make your questions very briefly. And Shehan. Hello. Hope I'm yeah. Yes, please. Please go yeah. ahead. Uh, I just want to know about uh, what are things we should consider when we are using uh, single core cables. That's that means in. Uh, in conduit, so in cable trace, uh, with regard to that uh, magnetic field thing, what are the things we should consider? Yeah, actually, single core cable. When you use single core cable, we usually uh, install it in a trapezoidal way, right? So R Y B, right? So R uh, R cable we R and Y cable we keep on the tray, then. Uh, B cable we keep on top of that, right? We install like this, and in certain intervals, we change this uh, formation. So then electromagnetic impact will be cancelled. And also, if you have another circuit, right? The first circuit, RYB, clockwise. In the second circuit, if you have a parallel circuit uh, to the first one, then RYB uh, anti-clockwise. So then both of it cancel out each other. So that's how you use uh, install single core cables. And we have to be careful while we are doing this cable terminations at the panel boards as well. I think uh, once you have sing single core cables. Yeah. And uh, Deepa? Yes, Engineer Patum. Good, good, Engineer Patum, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Um, Engineer Patum. Uh, the maximum can maximum demand vary if there is no proper uh, capacitor bank yes yes actually uh, yeah so if you are using a capacitor bank you can further uh, reduce the uh, maximum demand because then power factor uh, goes down right when it uh, close to unity so your uh, KVA demand further reduce, right? So, your so, current so, power reduce. So yeah, you okay. have, yeah, you have to plan it at the initial stage. If you are using capacitor band, then you can reduce further your maximum demand. Yes, I have seen a new installation in Sri Lanka. They yeah. don't, they, didn't, they didn't introduce the capacitor bank. Why is it that? And now in most of the installation, in most of the designs, actually it was not used, uh, I mean, introduced uh, sometimes back, but now the, you know, uh, we have a KVA charge also by the supply authority. So therefore, yes. everybody is very much keen on the, uh, you know, reactive power component. Yes. So therefore, now capacitor banks in most of our design, we use, we introduce capacitor bank. In most of the cases, depending on the building side, we introduce it to the main DB. But uh, if you have, if we have, you know, heavy inductive loads in uh, even SDB level like chiller panels and other, we introduce it to that level. That that, that is happening actually. Now. No, actually, I have seen a lot of big the project in the Sri Lanka, but they didn't introduce the capacitor bank without yeah, capacitor there, bank. Yeah, I don't deny your you know idea. So there, there are certain projects. Uh, yeah, still, because the earlier the uh, you know reactive this uh, KVA demand was not an issue. Now it's uh, becoming a critical issue with the you know revised tariff rates and others. So therefore, everybody wants to uh, evaluate it. Now there are a lot of uh, we are doing uh, you know power analysis. So, so the main one of the main concerns is that uh, check whether we can, they can reduce the reactive yeah. component. Yes, my question is why the new installation, new project did not introduce the capacitor bank? Because we, we, we very much consider the KVA now. Yeah, now, now actually we are introducing yes, yes, it's, 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 it's up to the client. It's up to yeah. the client. Yeah, it's up to the client to take the decision. So we shall we move to Chaturanga Kannanga? Right? Chaturanga. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, Mr. Batman, I got uh, two questions. One is uh, about the voltage drop uh, criteria given in the standard. When you yeah. said uh, for, uh, for your own transformer, it can go yeah. for higher uh, yes. rating. Does that mean only having a transformer supplied by the client or say for a particular like uh, 800 kVA, you request and get a transformer, like CB set up transformer for you, but still they can use it for the places as well. In that case, can we go for these uh, 5%, 8%? Or do we have to stay with the 2%, 3%, 5 margin? That is one no. question. And uh, all right. Okay. Yeah, let, let me answer your Shall first I... question. All right. Okay. Right. Okay. So actually now in local context, if it is less than 1,000, transformer will be definitely supplied by C, right? Uh, supply authority. So in, in that case, we don't know actually what is the voltage drop at transformer. Right? Because we don't have a control. So that's why specific uh, standard says try to keep a very you know narrow margin for the voltage drop. Because if there is already a voltage drop at transformer level, let's say 1%, 2% voltage drop at transformer level, then if we try to use a bigger margin to that one, then we don't get the desired you know uh, correct voltage drop voltage at the terminal end, the final equipment level. But if you have your own transformers, if it is more than 1,000, then transformer installation also done by the client. So then you can change by changing the tapping, right? Tapping of the transformer, you can make sure that at the transformer voltage is, uh, you, you can adjust the voltage and you can make it to zero voltage drop. So then it's, uh, standard allows, okay, since you know it very well, go another 2% or 1% more because of that. Okay. Another and question. Then, yes. And about the uh, testing of the earth loop impedance uh, in a TT yeah. system, uh, how can you test the earth loop? I mean, uh, com uh, entire earth loop uh, impedance? Uh, no. In TT system also, it uh, you know continues through the... Uh, Brown. So you can check at any point by connecting the instrument. But in TT system, the upper limits are given. If it is more than the uh, limit specified, so it was there in my presentation as in the, uh, the values. So if it is more than the value, then you have to check the earth and you have to discuss with the supply authority also because it matters your earth and their neutral earth also. If it exceeds the limit, acceptable limits, then definitely you have to discuss with it and take an action to reduce the value. Otherwise, this protection function will not uh, activate. Thank, okay, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. DLTM Disanayag. DLTM Disanayag. Sir, good evening. Good evening. Uh, sir, uh, I have two questions. One, yes. uh, one is uh, when we are do, uh, doing lighting design, at uh, present scenario, we are most of the time we are using LED light fittings, but uh, uh, it's okay when we are uh, uh, doing lighting design uh, by using the Lilac CO, uh, uh, another software, uh, lighting software, but in Lumen methods, uh, present day, we cannot find the utilization coefficient, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, lighting catalogs, they are not directly uh, provide the utilization coefficient charts. So yes. how we can find the utilization coefficient? Uh, is there any relation uh, between? Or, so uh, actually, actually, utilization factor you can calculate by uh, calculating the room index, and uh, you have to use the catalog values. And in in most of the catalogs, they provide. Even uh, LED, actually, if you use a reputed brand, they provide this table, uh, room index against, uh, you know, reflectance index. Uh, this uh, factor is given in most of the uh, reputed lighting products, even it is uh, LED. But, but in the present day, sir, even prone brands also, they are not providing, sir. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, in certain yeah, models, Most yes, of the reputed sure. brands also, even Philips also, they are not providing. Yeah, certain certain products actually I also have seen not uh, provided. 
So in that case, it's very difficult to you have to do it on assumption basis, as I mentioned, and you have to, you know, uh, record the assumptions and do something for that. If you don't have, and if you have something similar to that, use that value and do it on assumption basis. Otherwise, yes. uh, the solution is to use uh, dialogues. Thank you, sir. So my uh, next question is: uh, uh, When we are using the uh, capacitor bank, the yeah. Uh, when we uh, when we should use that mean uh, after commissioning the uh, building or prior to commissioning the building we have to de design the capacitor bank. Uh, no, actually you you can you can you can design now if you know the loads right if you know the heavy loads uh, which might affect the uh, power factor right then you can do an estimation during the design stage itself if you know the air conditioning details motor capacities and you know uh, you can calculate what is the power factor of the system so in that case you can do uh, you know you can design your power factor then if you know the uh, current power factor of the system by calculating the take into consideration the equipment by getting their values and you know data then you can decide okay if you want to maintain unity power factor and during the design it's state self you can estimate the capacitor bank capacity so if you uh, if there is anything that uh, you know the cal theoretical calculation and actual practical scenario difference then you can add uh, capacitors in the capacitor bank thank you thank you thank you, thank you mr Batham. and uh, please uh, stop raising your hands we have uh, about another six more hands so we have maximum seven minutes to go. We had uh, Chapa Madhushani. Now, I think uh, she's not here. Chapa is it's here. Or else we'll move into uh, Mayura Vijayanayaka. Mayura Vijayanayaka. Yes, sir. Sinet, uh, uh, Mayura, yes, please go ahead. Mayura. Uh, in cable deration factors, uh, there is a factor called underground cable, uh, CC factor point uh, it is uh, mentioned that according to the standard uh, take 0.9 uh, when you are installing cable underground and direct uh, cable can you explain yeah. it what is that uh, yeah actually this uh, tape, when you install cable underground due to uh, thermal resistivity uh, it affects the uh, current carrying capacity of the cable right now uh, mostly uh, we use uh, uh, CA and CG and uh, most of the case, times uh, CI also we take into account uh, and when you install underground cables uh, due to this uh, thermal resistivity, it affects the current carrying capacity. In that case, if you go further uh, deeper and deeper, we, you have to take into consideration this factor as well. Mr. Bethum, I think... Uh... We are talking about the direct burial, is it? Yeah. Yes, direct burial. Yes, direct burial. Yes. Okay, thank you. How? Sinet to the answer. Sinet to the answer. You're muted. Oh uh, yeah. Good evening. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, yeah. First one is uh, uh, how we can determine the dyes factors for the elements in the system, such as. Uh, like fire detection, BMS, and also the elements such as uh, aircraft warning lights and staircase uh, pressurization fans? Yeah, actually, uh, for fire systems, we don't consider diversity. Right? Diversity is uh, one. Because now, if, let's say if you have fire pump, if you have staircase pressurization fan, uh, 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 aircraft warning is, I think, it's uh, negligible now compared to other loads. So, the, uh, that fire, main fire equipment, actually we don't need to consider for the maximum demand because when there is a fire, definitely your other systems will be shut down, right? Now, if there is a fire, your air conditioning system will be definitely shut down, right? Your uh, air shoes and other equipment will be shut down. So then major component of the uh, load goes off, turned down during a fire. Then uh, easily you can, uh, you know, run equipment so therefore load calculation we don't take uh, diversity for fire no, no not really necessary to take because 
it won't impact. When it works, all other systems are not in operation. We'll move into Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vatu. Krishna or Krishna? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes. please. Please go ahead. Uh, when we consider the capacitor bank, uh, is that injected constant reactive power uh, according with the instantaneous flow factor? Uh, is that injected reactive power according with the instant power factor? That means uh, if that power factor is 7, 0 0.7, it will be injected uh, 2 kV, 2 kV, 2 kV or so something. Uh, if the power factor is uh, 0 0.8, is that injected to same value? It will no, be injected. No. No, no. Actually, when you design power uh, capacitor bands, let's say uh, you calculated uh, 300 uh, kilowatts uh, uh, capacitor band. So you have stages, right? Now you you should uh, design okay 101, then 52 stages, then after that 20 another two stages, then 10 two stages, then rest is fine. So then depending on the power factor, this. Uh, a power factor is not static, it varies from time to time. So depending on the power factor, so it uh, connect uh, the required ca capacitors into the system, right? Yeah, it has steps, different steps, right? Yes. Um, Charit Randika, shall we quickly go with Charit? Uh, good evening, sir. Yeah, good. Yes, please. Uh, yes, please. Uh, I have two questions. Yes, uh, this when current carrying this current carrying capacity is calculated. So if this uh, IC value is greater than the maximum rating of the cable, so, yes. so we'll have to use number of cables, no? Yes. So what is yes. the recommended? So is it recommended to use a higher number of low cross-sectional cables or lesser number of uh, high cross-sectional cables? Yeah, actually, yeah, I, I couldn't discuss those things because of this time issue. So usually now when you install cables, right? So we don't go for higher uh, size of cables, which is very difficult to install. So, and also you have to check the space availability and, you know, bending radius and those things. So by taking into consideration, if you feel that you can't go for like, let's say example, 44240 cable. So then best thing is to use uh, multi-circuit, right? Then uh, when you use multi-circuit also, always try to use even numbers. It is very easy to uh, terminate, uh, you know, uh, equally in the panel and the load thing. So then you can reduce the cable size, which is uh, feasible for the installation. There is no okay. hard and fast rule. So you have to look at into some financial aspects also. Like sometimes, uh, you know, one run of 240 cable will be cheaper than two runs of uh, 120 cable. So in that case, uh, you have to check that also. And it completely it's depend on the designers, uh, you know, uh, the project condition. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, sir. And this, uh, when this, when you calculate voltage drop, then so we'll have yeah. to divide the value from number of cables, no? Yes. Yes. Definitely. Yes. yes. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Madam, there was another question from Chapa that uh, the voltage drop standards are yeah. same for the AC and the DC because I think she might be refer referring to solar installation and others. Generally, DC cables once you have. Uh, the voltage drop standards are the same, which we follow the uh, same no, table. No, no, for the DC what, what I yeah, what I mentioned here is for the AC uh, circuit, but uh, for DC also we have to refer the standard now. IET uh, already updated with the solar installation things, so it, it it's not safe. Yes. Uh, this is Chapa. Yes. Yes, uh, it's not yes. for the uh, it's not for the solar installation. It's uh, it's like uh, I'm doing a substation projects for we have some DC loads, so yeah, uh, we are calculating some uh, uh, cable sizes for the DC load. So can we use the I triple eight three five? Uh, I have uh, I have seen like three percent uh, voltage drop is allowable for uh, DC cables. Yes, yes, that's right. So what I mentioned here. This uh, five percent, eight percent is for the uh, you know building in internal, not for the okay. transmission and distribution network. For transmission and distribution, DC definitely you have to follow the IEEE standard. Yes. 
like the uh, control protection panels, we, we are using the DC loads, right? So we can't yes. use the uh, BS standard for that uh, cable sizing. No, no. That, that's why I told uh, this uh, IET regulation is just an extracted version of 7671. So it covers mostly electrical installation inside buildings, right? So that's why I mentioned other standards that say like IEEE, IEC, NEC, uh, right, NEMA. So those standards we have to follow for that cases, which doesn't cover by this uh, IET or BS 767. Uh, so one more thing, uh, can you please specify any uh, specific standard for the DC cable sizing? DC, DC designs mostly covers on in IEEE and okay. also I have seen most of this uh, covered in uh, NEC standards as well, National Electrical Code. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you very much. You are, ladies and gentlemen, we are highly apologize because we are now almost 9.47 and even our Zoom platform expires very soon. Therefore, apologetically, we cannot uh, move ahead with many more questions. Your all questions, you can simply put in a you know, WhatsApp message so we can compile them together and send it to Engineer Fatum so we'll get the responses. For, and we can share those responses in our WhatsApp groups. I'm sure that may, almost all of you are compiled to WhatsApp groups and you are a member of those WhatsApp groups. Uh, Engineer Patum, uh, we are about to close and we are highly appreciate your time and thanks thanks a lot spending, especially on a Sunday evening and spending with us. If you have anything to mention at last, do you have any any final message, especially for these younger engineers, there are a lot of uh, undergraduates here. Do you have anything yeah, to actually, yeah, yeah. yeah um, uh, design is very important, right? So if you are involved in design projects, always... Uh, try to use standards and always uh, be methodical in your designs. So it's very easy and it's not uh, very difficult. I also learned through my you know, experience working in companies. So always try to follow our standards and always uh, keep records on your designs. So um, it's my pleasure to share my knowledge uh, with uh, our next level and also my colleagues. So whenever you have questions, you can send me. So I will try my best to help. So it's my great pleasure to have this opportunity to have this discussion with a uh, large uh, set of uh, engineers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patum, and for your pleasure. I think in Zoom we had, yes, thousand, and even we had some more people in live streaming of the YouTube as well. So we had almost 2,000 participants for the session. So, ladies and gentlemen, you all have been a great audience. Thank you very much, and we are at almost 10 minutes to 10. So thank you very much. And we can still see closer to 500 participants, your enthusiasm. Thank you very much. Uh, have a great night. At the same time, I would like to mention you, if you are in a WhatsApp group, please continue because not only the CPDs, we have some future learnings as well to be shared. At the same time, this YouTube recording will be shared within your WhatsApp groups as well. So please be selfless to share with your friends and you, especially the younger engineers who are into designs and who are seeking the proper methods of doing those electrical designs and the rest of the designs as well. Please share with all of your friends and the knowledge is to share and just uh, make sure that we as Sri Lankans are coming up with uh, difficult, difficult times. So what we can do best is to share the knowledge and uh, have your wealth in terms of knowledge. So ladies and gentlemen, again, finally, thank you very much, uh, Engineer Patu for your selfless contribution and the whole uh, audience, uh, organizing committee. Thank you very much and have a pleasant evening. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.